Hey everybody, welcome back to my Project 13. Today I want to talk about the Huawei Nexus 6P, the negatives or dislikes on this device. I'm going to cover areas that you've already probably have read about or seen. Maybe you have this device and you've already um, said to yourself, man, if I had known or I did know, but I didn't realize it was going to be a deal breaker uh, for 500 bucks. Or some of you are still considering and buying this device. And so this might be a video that you want to see and to see if these are deal breakers for you when it comes to negatives on the Huawei Nexus 6P. Now, before I get going, I want to say thank you so much for checking out the Nexus 6 video. I took a chance on the style of video. It was more emotionally based instead of techie. And um, it was a home run, man. I got a lot of great feedback and responses, and I'm still getting it. So thank you so much for connecting with me on that video. Man, it means a lot. Thanks for checking it out. So the first thing I want to cover is probably a silly one for most, but for me it's a big deal. I wish this would have been a 6-inch display. It's a beautiful quad HD, 1440 by 2560, 5.7-inch. It's gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous. I love it. But if you ask me, and I would have been in the room when they were deciding on what size, of, what size of a display to put on this device, I would have been the first one to raise his hand and said, I think it should go with a 6-inch display, like the Nexus 6. To me, that's a sweet spot. For most out there, you struggle with a 5-inch 5.2, let alone 5.5, 5.7. A lot of companies are, are making these devices bigger now these days, and a lot of people are transitioning over to a bigger display, but some of you are struggling with that. For me, the bigger, the better, and I wish it would have had a 6-inch display. So with that being said, let's move on to the stuff that probably makes more sense, okay? Yeah, bigger display, man. Anyway, um... OIS. A lot of you are into your cameras, into shooting video, and the fact that they didn't put OIS, optical image stabilization, on a $500 device doesn't sit well with a lot of people, okay? It just doesn't. Now, for me, it's not a deal breaker, but for some of you out there, you really would have liked optical image stabilization. And some of the devices you already have have that and you can tell the difference when a device has it or doesn't have it and when you're paying five hundred dollars for a device you're thinking that maybe Huawei could have put that into this device I don't know what you think but personally because I'm starting to dabble more into the photography area as far as with smartphones I do see the difference I really do it's something that I didn't think I'd really get into or see but I do. So I can see where a lot of you who do that a lot, and it's a hobby, I can see why paying 500 bucks for a device that doesn't have it would be a deal breaker. So moving on to the next area, expandable storage. Now we know that the trend is not to have expandable storage on devices. But for $500, I feel personally should have had expandable storage. I'm learning to be a better manager with my storage on my devices. This is the 32 gig variant. It's fine. I've worked with it and it's doing great. I had problems with the LG Nexus 5X 16 gig variant. Just way too many problems with not having expandable storage on that device. Better off with the 32 gig or 64 gig variant. Don't buy a 16 gig variant if it doesn't have expandable storage. 32 gig variant, no expandable storage, it's working fine. I've learned to manage my storage better. I can work with it. But if you ask me, would I have rather had it on here? Yes. Definitely for 500 bucks, I'd rather have had that on here. No wireless charging. A lot of you depend on wireless charging at the workplace. You don't want to carry a lot of cables. Um, you don't want to, um, excuse me here, you don't want to um, have that extra wall port in hand or in the bag or you don't have room for it or you don't sit next to one at the office or in the workplace like me in a meet room. You just don't have a lot of areas to plug in. So wireless charging is just more important and it is workable for you. It is a must have, doesn't have wireless charging. 
500 bucks doesn't have it does have NFC, but it doesn't have wireless charging. That could be a deal breaker for a lot of you out there. USB Type C is a good thing, and a lot of devices are going that way. But what can be the negative in that? Well, the transitioning period, because most of us have regular USB cables. Okay, we don't have USB Type C, so Thank God this came with two of them in the box. The LG Nexus 5X only had one. I had to order a cable through Amazon. Wasn't that expensive. But attaching that cable to my PC was a challenge because the data transfers were like phenomenally, phenomenally slow. In my car, connected to my car charger, it works fine in charging my device. 2.0 fast charge. It works great. So that's a problem when you're transitioning. So I'm going to have to upgrade my computer, get a better cable off Amazon, pay a little more money, so I get a better transfer rate. So this is all the stuff you got to think about when you're transitioning, and that can be a negative. That could be a dislike. It could be just irritating. Non-removable battery. Some people still like the non-removable battery. It doesn't bother me that much anymore, but there are devices out there that are still do. LG is still doing it with some other devices. The cheaper blue devices still have non. They'll actually give you an extra battery in the box, let alone a screen protector in the case. Five hundred bucks. Yeah, they. You know whether the thinness of this device was a sacrifice for a non-removable battery. Excuse me for the shadows there. I apologize for that. It's all I got to work with, so hang in there. Um, but it's a gorgeous device, and if that's the sacrifice, the battery life on this device has been awesome. So there's that positive I threw in there. It has been awesome. It's phenomenally great. Best device I've had all year when it comes to battery life. But you can't remove the battery, and some of you still want that. But that's a trend. A lot of the big boys out there are starting to not do that. And you know who I'm talking about? Samsung. You know who I'm talking about. So it's going that route anyway. So we got no bigger device for me. 5.7, it's fine, it'll work. I like a 6 inch device. No expandable storage. No wireless charging. No OIS. No removable battery. USB, USB Type-C transitioning may be a problem for most, but eventually we'll get there. The fingerprint scanner. On the back, it's phenomenally fast. Let me touch it right now. One, two, three. Phenomenally fast. But what's the negative in this possibly? Because it's on the back instead of the front? Well, when it's in the car and I got it on the holder, I have to like kind of reach back there and turn that on. So it's got to sit a little high up between the clasps. Kind of reach behind there and, and get it going. And that can be distracting when I'm driving. So it would have been easier to have it on the front. Now, that's preference, right? But it can be a negative and it can be a dislike. What do you think? And you got to remember, you're paying five hundred dollars for a device that works for all with all four carriers. But the problem is, some of you would have liked to get this in store with your carriers and attached a payment plan, like twenty bucks a month, on top of your plan, to have the sacrifices that you have to make with this device, whether it's a non-removable battery, whether it's expandable storage, whether it's wireless charging, whether it's optical image stabilization. Okay, just to mention a few of those. So, to come up with 500 bucks for a device that I think should have had a lot of these areas covered, and you have to buy it outright like that, and not have the option of payment plans, that could be frustrating for some. That could be a negative. That could be a huge dislike. It could be a determining factor on whether you get this device or not. So, I think I'm covering some really important areas here to think about. And I would hope to think that I'm going to get a lot of feedback on this and what you're already thinking as far as whether purchasing this device or you already have it in hand and you're just, for 500 bucks, that I re really make the right choice. And then, of course, there's the uh, shattering of the glass panel over the camera lens in the dual flash area. People are dropping these devices without cases and they're sh it's, it's shattering that glass panel. I think maybe it could have been a little slimmer. I like the design. I love it. I really do. But do we have to be that careful? I'm sure that they 
have had to do some tests on this device before they put it out to know if this was going to be a problem. Because you know if you drop it and it hits the corner, it's going to shatter that. We're getting reports out there of this happening. But it goes back to what I preach. Cases. Cases. You see the opening back there? That covers everything but the lens and the dual flash. So it only exposes a certain area and the rest is covered. So if I drop my device, I have a little bit of insurance that I'm not going to shatter that panel back there. That could be a negative because maybe you like to show off your device. Maybe you like to show off the sexiness of this device and you don't want to cover it, but you're taking a chance on dropping a $500 device and shattering not just the display, but the back. But um, yeah, we're going to talk about the positives too on this device. And they may outweigh the negatives. And I mentioned quite a few. If there's something I missed, let me know. Throw it below. Please give me a huge thumbs up if you like this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the My Project 13 team. Keep watching. There's more to come as always. Whew, that was a lot. That was a lot. Anyway, this is My Project 13. Till the next bit, God bless.